What's happening, family? It is your man, CRB Jr. We are here again at Motown Mafia Podcast, a Big Boss Filmworks production. To my left is my guy, my friend, and my business partner, Brother Lou. What's happening, baby? What it do, man? It is what it is. Everybody good in your world? Everybody's good, man. It's it's, it's uh, Things are starting to really uh, coast. They coast. We just got a bunch of hot stuff. Our man, uh, shout out to Al Prophet and American Dope. Al was just in town. Oh, yeah. Um, check out some of his stuff on American Dope we did. We got some stuff yeah. also that we're going to be uh, doing the uh, posting that we did with Al. Yeah, we got some of his stuff as well. Um, so we're loaded. Yeah, we got a lot, a lot of stuff coming. Um, you people who do not know, we also have a sister channel or a baby channel. Uh, mm-hmm. The Diaspora Plug, which we sometimes do some more of our intellectual or business related, or still got that Big Boss flavor too and yeah. stuff. So check out the Diaspora Plug TV, um, a Big Boss affiliated station. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, man, let's get to it. Yeah, man. And we're talking about right now. We're about to talk about doo wop. We're gonna talk about doo wop. We're gonna talk about the legend of Mr. B. Okay. We're going to talk about, um, they just came out with a new list. You know, it's the year in a list of all the black billionaires or those close to being billionaires. There was that's what one, I'm talking about. There was one that's in the honorable mention category that we that's really worth, and I'll just give you a hint. Uh, you can do well for yourself after you stop being president. Unbelievable. Really? We'll get to that. Yeah, blew my mind at the end of the, we're going to do the whole breakdown. But then Try they to had stay close to they had a list and it was two people mm-hmm. um, coming to America. Okay, went to the bank, and uh, there's a reason why uh, Michelle and them ain't got no time to be worried about <laughs> <laughs> that. They doing better now. They got a lot of coochie sweaters, sweaters now. now. <laughs> yeah, they do it. They paid uh, off their student loans. No. <laughs> yeah, they gave him in the office still owing student loans, not no more. No oh, man. Um, and then we're gonna talk about some interesting thing that um, I actually did see. You know, I'm not gonna hate, um, even though we come for you, Vlad. We come for you. But saw a great <laughs> interview um, on Vlad, one of the founders of Fubu, and he was talking about his spending habits when they hit that lick, and um, it just reminded us of uh the brothers from our from our orbit sometimes yeah. how we behave once we get that bag right yeah right. man but um yeah we're gonna start off with um you know we're here in detroit home of that infamous and now famous street organization known as ybi a acronym for young boys young boys Incorpor- incorporated right shout out to all those guys um r.i.p to brett Shout out to uh, Mr. Cooper, a.k.a. Pep. Shout out to uh, Big Five, Brother Steve. Still looking for you, brothers, to come in. Shout out to the uh, brother who got a, another uh, show here in the city. Um, shout out to Chestnut. Okay. Um, shout out to all those guys, man, all those YBI guys. Um, you know, um, there was always a lot of street politics involved in that situation. But, um, you know, I've been the, the voice of, I try to be the voice of reason. Um, those guys' place in um, Detroit street lore cannot be denied. Yeah, uh, without question. And those would be the guys in, the, in that in that circle that we were friends with and and and, and um, had good times with. And those that my friend, and my brother Eddie, did business with, and then through him, um, I got to be their acquaintance. And then even the guys on the other side of the street, because you know we all middle aged men now, and we it, we're, you know a lot of time has passed. So shout out to all those guys. But with that said about YBI, um, you know, in doing our research of this and, and trying to give these street legends their flowers, okay, or, or put some things in some historical context, and you know, needless to say, with um, the success of the BMF show, and there's about to be a BMF documentary. You got three different projects that we spoke about um, that are about to come out on Kenneth Supreme McGriff and the Supreme team. As this street thing and hustler stories become so mainstream, um, obviously the, some of the people in the other cultures and communities, they got bigger microphones than us. And then they start telling the story their way. Right. And a lot of the characters who should be mentioned 
don't get mentioned. Yeah, absolutely. We've yeah. seen we've seen uh, movies in the past five years. Well, a little bit longer than five years. In the past uh, ten years, within us doing our thing here, that had a lot of inaccuracies. A lot of inaccuracies. I mean, and again, you know, we did a post a while ago um, and kind of roasted the White Boy Rick movie. But shout out to White Boy Rick to Rick Wershing. Um, yeah, man. You know, we actually carry. Um, or used to carry, he's, he's transitioning companies. He's in the cannabis business now, and we actually mm-hmm. carry his product at, at, uh, at the Where it's called, the Eighth? Uh, it's called the Eighth, yep. The Eighth's by the Eighth's about the Eighth Amendment. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, did good, did very well. He's doing, he's doing well and doing a lot of positive things. But yeah, they completely just destroyed a movie about his life. And it was, I mean, a story. Yeah. I mean, you had a uh, shout out to the Curry Boys, Big Man, Little Man, and all them. Um, I mean, it was a story, just just a classic yeah. story. But you know, they tell the white boy Rick story. They don't mention Maserati Rick. They don't mention best friends. They don't miss. They don't mention Demetrius Holloway. And and the and the problem with these these movies, especially about our thing here, is it this stuff doesn't these these stories don't happen in a vacuum. You know, it, I mean, there's no inclusion, none. It's just okay. This is the white boy Rick's story, and then they throw a few names out, and you know, give it a little, you know, sprinkle a little bit of. I mean, and and I love what they're doing with stars, and definitely shout out to Meech. Uh, yeah, he'll be, you know, may he get home soon. Shout out to T, who is home. Yeah, um, shout out to the whole BMF family. But you know they throw Eminem in playing White Boy Rick in like episode right, three. Right, right. They 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 did something. I think they digitally de-aged him or something like that, and had him for in it for a hot second. And I get it. They're doing BMF. It's Detroit. It's a hustle. It's a street. It's a street TV series. You gotta throw in. But yeah. to 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 throw White Boy Rick into that episode with no context. Right. It's just it's it was a disservice. It was a disservice, I, and I get it. Again, I ain't mad at them at all. I, no, I, I mean, I it's fan service is what they call it. There, there you go. There you go. But, um, the you know, and shout out to um, Dame Dash and those guys. I believe they're working on the paid in full, too, um, because what Dame did when he did paid in full was he brought, which was an urban legend in our community, to the big screen, and let the legend and the tragedy of that whole Alpo, AZ, Rich Porter thing, you know, at least allow our, our community to have a, a point of reference to talk about this kind of thing. And and um, if you guys have not read, um, oh, it's at my house. Uh, great book also in that era is uh, called The Crack Era from the big homie Kevin Childs. Kevin Childs book. Yeah, yeah, if you guys have not read that and you're into this kind of thing. Do yourself a favor and get the crack era by uh, the homie Kevin Childs. Um, with that said, though, he mentions this these guys in his book, but I went and I did, and I viewed some you know more documentaries and things on them, and I was not. I'll be honest, I was not that familiar. I had heard in casual in my time in New York, you would hear the names, but I really didn't. And, and the name is a brother named, uh, and both of these guys are actually R.I.P. I believe. Uh, doo-wop in LA. Okay. Um, they were closely associated in childhood friends with Rich Porter from the paid in full story, right? Okay. But I have not heard any contradicting stories that doo-wop and LA were basically the New York version mm-hmm. of Young Boys Incorporated. Okay. Uh, uh, 15, 16 year olds literally making millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. And the impact, and it, you know, you were of age seeing the YBI phenomenon here in Detroit, right? I was living around the corner from it. Uh, my grandparents, my grandparents oh, stayed yeah, not right too far from headquarters. Right, right, right. Exactly. We heard, we heard things, uh, but you know, as a kid, they tried to keep me sheltered from it. But I mean, <laughs> okay, but you saw how it changed Detroit's culture. Oh God, yes. I'll never forget going to uh, high school to ground effects. It was like, it looked like UFOs. I mean, it was no, it was the, the bumping sounds, the, 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 
clothes. I mean, so let me let me unpack when I say it changed the culture. Everything. You had, um, and again, it, it seemed to be the same kind of situation of the impact that uh, Duop and his man L.A. had in Harlem is what guys like um, Brett and Pep, okay, um, and Bunyan and all those guys who were just in their teens, right handling hundreds of thousands of dollars, buying custom, um, you know, they were talking about like doo was the first guy uh, in Harlem to buy an Audi. Um, and then his man, L.A., went and bought a Saab. Wow. Um, same thing, you know, these guys here, they were buying, uh, what was the big Corvette, the Crossfire. Okay. And the wild young boys was buying them Crossfire vets. Um, they made Laredo Jeeps, what Laredo Jeeps are. Mm-hmm. They um, and, and for better or for worse, you know, I'm old enough to because right before that era, you know, if you were a high school kid mm-hmm. and you had a job at the mall and you had a car, no, you was that guy. You were that guy. No, you you had <laughs> you anything you wanted. I mean, you were the young ladies. Alpha male. Mm-hmm. If you had a job, I mean, I'm talking about at the restaurant, at the mall, or at the movie theater, and you had a car of your own, oh, no, it was and you were 16, 17 years old, it's a wrap. And you getting a paycheck <laughs> every seven, 14 days, you were the envy of all your friends. Yes, indeed. And then the YBI phenomenon occurred. No, that 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 whole landscape changed. And then you saw, for lack of a better word, your peer competition. You weren't competing to see who was doing better at working at the movie theater or working at the Foot Locker. It was, these guys were buying, they were doing better than everybody's parents. Mm-hmm. They, you know, it, 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 it made it difficult to listen to the teacher and the principal and what he's saying, although what the teacher and the principal were saying was correct. Mm-hmm. But your man is 16. He just does not have drive. And they're same thing with they're saying this doo-wop and, and L.A. in Harlem. They were buying these cars before they had driver's license. I know that that Dexter YBI crew, they were buying whips long before they had driver's license. Yeah, big time. They're buying. They're wearing twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars worth of jewelry. And again, for better or for worse, the whole world, the whole Detroit saw this. And just like Detroit, like Harlem, with those guys, it wasn't that like Duop and and L. A. and Harlem, they came in the aftermath of the Nicky Barnes organization going away. Frank Matthews had fled years before that. Mm-hmm. Um, the Freddie Myers organization that went down in 83. Um, YBI followed Doc Davis and, and Frank Nitty Usher and, of course, Eddie Jackson and Pops, Black Butch, Rudolph, and that crew. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out to 5 Just talk to 5 nephew. Shout out to Yasmin. Um, but Eddie... And all those guys from the 70s, I was just thinking about this. Like, Eddie and his whole crew, they were all family. They all had, when they started hustling, they all had jobs and children. So yes, this, they did. They What, 26, 28? Tw- tw- Pops was in his late 20s. Eddie was in his mid-20s. Five old Dolph. All those guys were mid mid to late 20s. But they all had worked at the plant. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, bus driver, cab driver. It's different when you get into the streets and you have a family, a woman or wife and kids, Mm -hmm. and you get into the game and you're a sophomore in high school. Yeah, that changes the dynamic exponentially. And it made young people not want to wait for success. That's right. It made waiting, saving that shit went out the window. Mm-hmm. I can get with my man. They got that China White, and it can happen. I can go from walking to riding Benzes in a month. Um, 
you know, in the, in the murder and mayhem, you know, and so they're, they're talking about um, in this in the doo documentary um, and the same again, same thing with the YBI thing here. And to, what nobody had was any financial literacy, right? Absolutely not. Now, of course, we now, like me as a middle aged businessman talking about the 16 year olds don't talk about financial literacy. And we often when people cover this crime stuff or this street stuff, they don't put the age of the people in context. It is so crazy to be 18, 17, handling millions of dollars. Coming from an inv a, a poverty environment where no one's ever had any real money. That's right. So they don't know. Nobody's telling them, hey, you should be. I mean, even though doo -wop, this guy doo -wop later in his um in his career, he would end up, um, after a robbery attempt in New York or the, the killing of his uncle Butter, he ended up taking a two-year break, went down to Virginia, set up his thing. Um, when he came back, he did set, he bought a clothing store. Okay. And he set up a record label uh, right actually before his demise. Okay. Um, but nobody is saying, hey, young man, do you understand? You're 17, 18 years old. You're sitting on three, four million dollars. This is in the 80s. So three, four million in the 80s, easily 10, 12 million now. Mm -hmm. you, you, you don't need to do this anymore. You won. You already have won the game of life at 18. That's right. Go to Jamaica, go to the Bahamas, move to Hawaii. But with no financial literacy or no one around same situation of course with YBI right I know all those guys are still like all that money and I can relate to all the money that has touched my hands and we did better with the money than most you know the 40 year family business and all mm -hmm. um but it's a he's a phenomenal character and I just I, I really want that that it, it, I had never really heard of another city that had the I understood exactly obviously being here what YBI did to Detroit and how it changed the landscape and mindset of people right um but yeah for those who you guys who are into that look check out the doo-wop um LA story um you'll find it quite quite interesting um, and what I did not know, if you know, if you're familiar with the um, Jay-Z Damon Dash story that uh, Dame says when he first met Jay-Z and people were like, well, why did you know you could deal with him? And he and Dame's like, because he was wearing Nike Air Force Ones and only us guys in Harlem's wore Uptowns. Guys in Brooklyn didn't wear Air Force Ones. So when I, when Dame's like, when he saw Jay wearing Air Force Ones, he was like, okay, this guy got some style. <laughs> what I did not know until watching the doo-wop documentary that it was doo-wop in L.A. and that crew that made the Air Force Ones known as Uptowns. Uptowns, okay. That that came that came from that crew, and um, they were home based in an area of Harlem known as Sugar Hill, which okay. you guys know. There's a famous uh, movie. Yeah, the movie. We're, we're gonna review on the West AZ Street. song. The, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So to wrap up, brother Lou, on this um, the legend of doo-wop. In L.A. out of uh, out of Harlem again. If you guys are not up on that, it's a lot of stuff uh, on YouTube available about them. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna have to go back through the archives and really do a little deeper dive into them. Mm -hmm. But um, there were a couple things again. It reminded me because one of the incidents that like led to the demise of uh, the brother in L.A. Okay, was his mom's house gets robbed by of course some comrades because what Biggie say. That that uh, that cheddar breed jealousy, <laughs> and uh, some guys he had started off hustling with end up robbing his mom's house, which led to a beef, which eventually led to L.A.'s um, demise. Damn. And uh, it reminded me though when Eddie moved, when he told my father that he was gonna move to the suburbs and get mm -hmm. out the city, and he was like, "Why wow, you got a nice house in the city?" And Eddie was like, "Man, I can't have all this money." And niggas jumping out on the bushes. I got to worry about niggas jumping out the bushes and shit like that. Um, and so many, again, when it's new to you, you know, and that's what we have yeah. to really understand. The money be new. They don't, we don't even know 
No one to say, hey, man, you can't be making a million dollars a week and your mama still in the hood. Can't do it. Tragedy going to happen. And there's so many from New York to Detroit to Atlanta tragedies that occur because we just don't be knowing. Um, and it ain't just people in the street. It ain't people in the street. I think about uh, that, that tragedy with uh, Jennifer, Jennifer Hudson. Jennifer Hudson, God rest her soul. Shout out to Jennifer Hudson. Oh, she's still alive. Yeah, she's still alive. But, but, but her their family. family yeah, yeah, her family, man. Wow. And nobody, and no, same situation, new money. Mm-hmm. And nobody say, hey, baby girl, you all on TV, people seeing this, that, and the third, you all in these movies. Your mama's still here on the block. That's right. Somebody going to think something sideways. You know, but the big man, uh, R.I.P. Eddie Jackson, you know, Eddie was like, nah, we moving out here to the suburbs yeah. with the private security. Uh, mm -hmm. Only niggas going to be around here going to be Smokey Robinson and some NBA ball players, some Motown elite. Right. And I ain't got to worry about when I come out, when I pull up at night in my Rolls Royce, as he said, niggas jumping off the roof, niggas coming from behind the bushes, Berman. I ain't living like that. And nowadays, Southfield ain't the place to be like that. No, not now. You got to go West Bloomfield or, or Bloomfield Hills That's or, right. or, or Gross Point. Um, but mm -hmm. the point is, you got to get out the hood. Got and, to. And as we see in the hip hop community now, all the stuff that still continues to happen because you have young black millionaires who still keep themselves so close to the front line. That's right. Um, there was a little side note on him, though. Duwop was charging the Dominicans $10,000, I want to say, a day to hustle on his block. He was an insightful young man. Oh, he was enterprising. He was an enterprising young man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and to show you to kind of connect, according to... Um, the, the content that's out there, you know, his plug was so good that he told the Dominicans who were getting supplied directly from the Colombians, he need to help. And in fact, if you guys want a piece of the action on my block, I need that ten thousand I need that ten large a day. And you kids can get a piece of the action. But without that, we ain't having we it. We can't do this. We can't do that. While we understood that in the quote unquote legitimate economy. In the, wow, yeah, man. That you just can't come to my neighborhood, open up a store, and sell all the Hennessy and Remy and Newports on my block, and then you don't give up nothing to the block? Nah, no panache? Nothing. Nothing. But hard something and bubble gum, and guess what? I'm fresh out of bubble gum. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, again, yeah, man. Um, fascinating story. Those guys do yeah. up in L.A. They were truly the YBI of New York. Mm -hmm. um, interesting part of our history. Really, really affected. Um, because if if they affected the culture of Harlem, that means they affected the culture of hip hop. Without question. Which means they affected the culture of the world. Definitely. Because hip hop culture is the dominant culture and driving force. It, it beat out rock. You know what I mean? So, yeah, man. Do do op LA. You guys, if you're into that stuff, check them out. Big time. And um, kind of segueing back to the co glory days of cocaine. Uh, oh, before before such an entree vous, did you want to give a little love to our sponsor? Yeah, Vano. Vano's Apparel. Vano is over there on Davidson. I got to get the address. I should be ready, locked, and loaded with this. But right there on Lin on Davidson between Linwood and Dexter is Vano's Apparel. Um, go in there. They've got the hottest men and women apparel available. That is at 3246 West Davidson, Suite A. Mm -hmm. Right next to it. Is also under the vinyl umbrella. Blazing hookahs. Blazing hookahs. Got to holler at them. Holler at. Um, you can ask for vinyl if you're over there. You can ask for Kayla. You can ask for Bow Wow or any of the other family over there. Again, just the hottest apparel in the city. Um, I think even this 
a hoodie and jogging set I got came came from there. So oh, most no, of, no, no question. It's top notch up there. Top notch. He I always tease Vano that he is the Rodeo Drive of the hood. Without question. So shout out to the homie Vano. And definitely for real, brothers and sisters, you guys got to get some gear. You're doing what you're doing. Seasons are changing. You got to get your coat game right. Got to get your boot game right. Yep. Definitely it will be worth your time to go check out Vinyl's Apparel. And that's at 3246 West Davidson Suite A. If you guys like hookah, need some hookah uh, uh, apparel or hookah um, infrastructure, you know, if you want to throw a hookah party, just want a book, a small place for a venue, Blazing yeah. Hookahs is a great location. So again, 3246 West Davison, Vinos and Blazing Hookahs, give them a shout. Mention Lou's name, mention my name, mention Big Boss Filmworks, Motown Mafia Podcast. They always show love, but they will show even some additional love. And proud for them to be a sponsor of the Motown Mafia podcast. Big time. And if you're interested, hit us up in sponsorship. Yes, a lot of sponsorship opportunities. Um, and um, we'll help you get out there, man. We'll help you get out there. By do, we're redoing the studio here. Um, they were telling me, in fact, that in the front, Lou, that we should um, use, because we're right here on West 7 Mile, uh, that, that front banner that we can rotate it out. So maybe we'll That's get, we have to get over there and get to vinyls and, and, um, yeah, get some official sponsorship, mm -hmm. uh, collateral. Mm -hmm.